This project is to make an art piece for our school's auction fundraiser. And my idea was to have the kids in my daughter's class make handprints. And I would take those handprints and make them into a wood inlaid piece, sort of like marquetry, but thicker. <laughs> we got the kids' handprints. It was the teacher's idea to have the kids pair off and paint each other's hands. And this actually made things go a lot quicker as we got this all done in less than half an hour. And it was fun. <laughs> Um, Claire's that friend who's woodworking. So he's going to scan the handprints in to his computer and then he's able to transfer it to a special saw in his wood shop that cuts things out of wood. So my thought was to scan these into the computer and make something that I can cut out with the CNC machine. And I played around with having the computer convert the scan into line work. And it'll do that but it was taking a while to get it cleaned up enough to be usable. It was sort of giving me too much detail. So it ended up being easier to just trace each hand and draw the line work myself. And I could go in and, and fix where it wasn't, wasn't quite the same as the print. And this would give me smoother curves and bigger curves as I can't get into anything tighter than an eighth of an inch diameter. So once I had each hand drawn, I could make the G-code to run the CNC machine from that. So I needed to make the actual piece. What I came up with for an overall idea was to do an abstraction of flowers growing in front of a fence where the handprints are the flowers. So what I'll make first is the fence, which will be the background for the handprints to sit on or sit in. <laughs> so in making the fence, I wanted to have the pickets be lighter, then make a, a darker wood strip for the space between the pickets so that it would read as a, as a pattern of a fence. So the pickets are kaya wood, and I found some really light pieces of that. Then the space between the pickets is walnut. And I wanted to make a little detail of the structure of the fence that runs behind the pickets. So I glued a piece of darker kaya and walnut together. And that would make the little bit of fence structure and the little shadow falling on that structure behind the pickets. So these are the walnut pickets. Now I can cut off a piece at each end and make a space for that little structure detail that I was gluing up earlier. Now that's dry. And I can trim it down to size. I glued it up a little bit bigger than I needed. And I can cut each one of those pieces to length. They're sort of like little segments that are gonna go in the vertical shadow strip between the pickets. I made a quick jig to glue the, the pieces together. So I'm just gonna glue this little piece into the, into the stick and clamp that together. So it's a little bit like making a segmented bowl, except I'm not making rings, I'm making sticks. I can joint those smooth. Then I cut the other side, which had just a few more bumps on it, and I could get them all the same width this way. Then once I had the pieces that make up the spaces between the pickets, I can then make the pickets themselves. So this is the lighter pieces of kaya that I mentioned earlier, and I can cut those to a rough width. Then I set up a quick stop, and I can cut a bunch of lengths of this, which will make the pickets. Then I can cut them to a final width. It's a little easier to get them all the same when they're shorter. Now you can see how the pattern works. So there's a picket and then there's a space. And that'll make a section of fence. 
since I had so many pieces to glue, I did it in two halves. So I did one, one side, clamped that together, then, then did the second side, and then clamped the second side to that first side. So I didn't have so many strips sitting there waiting to be clamped with glue in them. And it seemed to work. Then I had my background. And I cleaned that up a little bit. A little glue scraping. <laughs> And it's over to the CNC machine. So I set up a zero zero point, an origin that I could always come back to on the panel. Then the first thing to cut are all of the stems for the flowers. So I cut a bunch of arced lines into the fence pattern. And I cut these with an eighth inch bit. So to fill the slots, I had to cut a bunch of eighth inch wide strips. And I did this in walnut, so they would read against the lighter fence pickets. I started in on the first one, and I realized I was going to have to cut these to length. And I didn't want to have to walk over to the radial arm saw or over to the table saw for each one that I was cutting. So I made a little miter box so that I could just cut these by hand. And this worked really well. And I could make the miter box work perfectly with the strips that I was making. And the end of these that I was cutting didn't have to be perfect, as I'm gonna trim off the end altogether when I'm done. But I just didn't wanna break off the end or cut it with a big pair of scissors or, or do something kind of crunchy. <laughs> so it worked well to just do it by hand really quickly. And all those went in pretty well. Then I started cutting out the pockets for the hands. And I did these in batches so that the hands on the top are the furthest back. And as the hands come down, they're also coming forward. As the hands that are lower will tend to overlap the hands above. That was just the rule that I came up with for the piece. So once I had some of the pockets cut out, I made the material that I was gonna then use to make the hands. So what I needed were thin, flat, fairly wide pieces of different colored woods. And with the, with the hands and the flowers, I just wanted a lot of color. So I, I found all of the colored wood I could find. I've got purple heart and red heart and yellow heart and a little paduke and then some maple and even some jatoba and some walnut. So lots of different colors. So once I had two sides jointed, I could then run these pieces through the bandsaw and resaw them into thin, flat pieces. Then I could plane them all to be the same, or fairly close to the same. And there were a few that weren't going to quite be wide enough, so I glued them together to make a wider piece kind of doing a book match thing. And I could start cutting the hands out. Now I've seen where when doing a cutting board or when I've seen other things like this, they're often cut with a, with a three degree angled bit so that you get a little bit of a taper on the sides, which makes sense because as you, you push the piece into the hole, it gets tighter and tighter. But for these, I just did a vertical cut for now. I, I think at some point I need to figure out the the angled side routine. Now I found after cutting these, they oftentimes weren't quite ready to go in the holes. There'd be a little burr or there'd be a little patch that was fuzzy or something. So they needed a little work. Also, some of the tight inside corners needed to be rounded down a little bit as they weren't quite fitting into the inside curve of the piece. And I think this is the first time I've used a brush to lay down glue. <laughs> now, like I said, I did these in batches, so I brought the piece back. And I did it this way so that the, the hands 
in the next batch would overlap the hands that had been done previously. So it wasn't like a bunch of separated hands or flowers in front of a fence. They would actually kind of be together. And this meant it was complicated figuring out and keeping track of which hands I had done, which hands hadn't been done, which hands I had cut out but hadn't cut out pockets for yet. It all went smoothly. I didn't do any major screw-ups as far as keeping track of the different parts. I had one hand fall on the floor and a finger broke off, but I just glued it into place as I was gluing it into the hole and it, it worked just fine. And one of the hands I cut one of the interior parts on the wrong side of the line, so it ended up leaving a gap the width of the router bit. <laughs> so I had to redo that hand. So once all the hands were in, I could take it back to the CNC machine and flush trim the top, or face trim the top. I kept thinking this was a little similar to segmented wood turning, where this is the wood turning part, where you sort of take the, the blob of wood bits that you've glued together and you trim it all up and you sort of cut off the lumpy bits that, that, that you don't want. In concept, this is sort of the wood turning section of the project except it's flat. And it came out really nice. There were a few spots where the wood chipped a little bit, but I don't want to run it again because I don't know that it'll do any better. So I'll just leave it as is, but it looks really good. And I think for now, I'll sand it and call this video done. And I think what I'll do is the next video, I'll cut down the edges and make a frame for this and put the finish on. Thanks for watching.